Hello again, everyday carry fans and people that like small knives. So I got a titanium alloy 7 CR17 pocket knife. Those might be search descriptions if you want to find this. I'll leave an AliExpress link though if you want to support the channel with my affiliation. Alright, so I just like small knives and AliExpress is close to where I live, that's why I buy from there. Alright, yeah, so. Overall dimensions of this thing closed 45 by 29 by 13. And then, if we open this thing, I guess I'm really <laughs> it's so short. I like it though. I, gen I buy these things to cut boxes most of the time. I generally don't carry a knife with me in the real world, just on my wallet in case I need to cut open a box or an envelope. Okay, so now we have an overall length of uh, 53 millimeters, and the effective blade length of this dimension here is around maybe 23 millimeters, and then this one maybe around 16 millimeters. All right, overall weight of this thing is pretty heavy, 33 grams with the ring. Maybe 34 grams in that ballpark. So yeah, I don't, I, uh, <coughs> I don't think you'd want to really carry this. Or maybe it's, I mean, it's not bad, I guess, but it's too heavy for me. I, I like my stuff to weigh like 10 grams or less. Uh, I don't like carrying things. But if you have to carry open boxes a lot, I suppose so. All right, so let's take a look at the construction of this thing. And see if it's worth the money. I think it was pretty cheap though. So it's a nice, uh, I guess it's like sand, I don't know if it's sandblasted. It's got a graininess, but it's very fine, the graininess of it. So maybe it's just tumble finished or something. It seems to be stained already. But the nice thing about uh, titanium is it never rusts. So you could leave this in the ocean. The blade might rust, but this body will never rust. All right, it's got some Torx head screws here. Three of them there look all right. This you'll notice is EDM, I think, cutting here because it's such a thin cut. That probably has to do with the locking because I see a dimple here. So there might be a ball bearing underneath this thing, and that's what locks into that hole later. I can even see the sweep already, just turning it once, right? So that's grease, I think, that it just went through. Uh, this looks like a bottle opener. I'm sure that would work effectively. Uh, oh, one thing I didn't tell you guys is the thickness of the blade. 1.7, so it's going to be pretty wide cutting through some stuff. Uh, Alright, so this side looks alright. Then we have a middle plate here of titanium as well. And then this clip is quite nice. It's actually... Oh, this has EDM cutting as well. See this? See, see the air passing through there? That's what allows it to flex. But preferably without ever breaking because the titanium is such a strong material. But I gotta say, that's a really strong belt clip. You put that on a belt, there's no way that's gonna come off. That is, that's crazy, crazy strong. All right, so I, I that's gonna stay on your belt, that's for sure. Uh, so we have more Torx heads here. This little detail, the grooves is nice. And then I suppose you could run a lanyard or a key ring through there. Quite, a, quite easily. I'm not going to bother because I'm not actually going to put this on a key. And then flipping it again, I guess we're going to get used to the which direction. I guess it flips out in this this direction, so I assume this would be considered the face. It's going to turn clockwise. What I was hoping for is something more like a flipper. So maybe you grab it with your finger, but it's kind of gouging my fingertip there. And then, yeah, you might have to use two movements. I don't know if you can do it from all this here. Hold on. No, see how I'm holding it? It's too much leverage. So this I assume is the pivot point. Yeah, you know, there's a cutout there. See, there's another detent. That's the locking detent. So it's a little bit lightened, which is nice. And you'll see this is, I guess, to close it up easily, but you could also just push it on the edge. But yeah, actually actuating this the first time is kind of tough with this thing here. I don't know if it could have been designed better. I almost feel like if this bottle opener was on this side and they had a bunch of ridges here for your finger to grab, that would have been a better design. 
but yeah, I can obviously open it. It's not a. It's just going to take a little longer than a, a nice flipper knife. Okay, let's see what we can cut. Hold on. All right, first test is paper. Let's see if it comes with a sharp edge. And it does. That's that's actually quite impressive. So that's that edge. Let's put the push edge though. Look, even the push edge. Wow, that's nice. <laughs> I didn't expect it to be sharp. I like this. This is neat. You know, it's like a sh it's like a planer. That's impressive. And now it's a knife. Knife. Uh, no, it's still going. Planer. It's not very often you have a planer in your pocket, so that's really cool. All right, so now I am gonna dull it probably. Here's a bamboo chopstick. Ergonomically, it's a really short handle, right? So it's uh, obviously not as easy to use as a traditional length knife with a full full palm handle. This is more of a two finger. Uh, I mean these two. I don't know about three fingers because I'm getting really close to that edge, right? If I slip, I'm gonna cut myself. So I think I'd rather just use it like this, using these three, these three fingers to hold it in position. So the blade being so thick, it's obviously strong enough to cut through, you know, harder materials. Here's a plus disposable fork, right? Not an issue. Here's a big chunk of balsa wood, which is a really soft wood. But now here's the issue, because the blade is so thick, it's deforming the material quite a bit. So you have to see would also dug in there at the frame. Oh, but let's plane some wood here. That's interesting. Yeah, all right. It's not the best planer. It's not designed to be a planer, but you can scrape windows with this thing if you wanted to, which would actually would be very handy. If you if you work at a place that puts stickers on cars and stuff like that, or even if you're like say a janitor and need to remove bubble gum and stickers from uh, bad people that do that sort of stuff, yeah, this would work quite effectively. So actually, that's quite a pleasant surprise. What I really like though are square edges like this because to puncture a box, especially like a tape, you know, it's very easy to do. But here's a really thick cardboard box. Little test box. So forget the tape, I'm gonna just try to cut this whole thing off here. So yeah, see it punctures very easily because it's a square edge. Dragging it though is a whole different story. That's not easy to do because it has to displace the blade through that material. It can clearly do it, it's just that uh, it's a lot of drag, you know, it's really deforming the cardboard being such a thick blade. Whereas, you know, a hobby knife would cut through that, or a cheap box cutter would cut through that a lot easier. So, here's a little, I don't think white foam's gonna be an issue. Yeah, it's fine, fine. All right, well, I made quite a mess already. So it's a unique looking knife. That's my take on it, it's unique looking. It's unique that it has a front push blade, like a window scraper, yet it can still be held like a normal knife and cut away from you. Or if you're not gonna do things proper, cut towards you. Uh, the, the opening mechanism, I think, could be a little smoother. I don't think there's a ball bearing in there. Uh, it's, it's pretty rough feeling. So I don't think it's pivoting on a bunch of bearings. This is that one ball bearing used to lock into those detents. You can hear it lock into place. So I don't think you'll, I don't think you can accidentally open either because uh, that ball detent is quite strong, and then there simply isn't much blade material sticking out. I suppose though this could snag on some clothing, and then it would open if it snagged on a rope or perhaps some webbing on a backpack then it could do that and then that could possibly cut you so keep that in mind Let's try not to bleed alright so this is a nice touch I, I was really impressed with this thing as well 
and the overall thickness and build quality seems quite robust. I don't think it's going to break very easily. Uh, I think also because the blade is so short, you could jam it into something and torque it quite a bit. Alright, so I think you could use this as a pry bar almost. Oh, wait a sec, look at this though now. The, when I'm really trying to force it, that blit, that lock, see? The lock shifted. So bear in mind, this is not designed to be a pry bar. You could, you know, in a pinch, I suppose you could use it as a pry bar, but just be mindful that that thing is going to shift, see? But pleasantly, because the blade is so short, I still don't think you could cut yourself, right? Because look, how am I going to get my finger in there? If it collapses, the blade is so short, it's collapsed right now, but I don't think it's going to cut you. It's possible. But yeah, so I think that could have, I don't know. Yeah, I wonder if maybe they brought this edge all the way out there, but then, no, it would. No, I don't know. I think it's well. Take what you will from it. I'm not gonna make any some random conclusions that might get you hurt. So I think it's all right. I think for the price I paid, it, it's a pretty quality little gadgety kind of knife, just more for uh, fun. Actual usage, uh, that's up to you. You're gonna have to have a particular scenario, I think, to really warrant the use of this day-to-day, -day, everyday carry, but. At least it's a short blade, so you're only using generally what you're going to use. And instead of having a 10 inch blade, who's going to use something like that every day? Unless you're a butcher. Thanks for watching. I'm rambling on. We'll see you in the next uh, knife video. Bye.